set Gearbox up in 2014, and we did so in partnership with others who had done a similar hub for the IT space, so with iHub specifically. And so uh, when we started out, we found that uh, we, 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 our idea rather was to make it possible for that person who has the idea to make a working prototype of the idea. Uh, so, you know, you can have whatever product you have in mind or a machine to make a prototype and test it in the marketplace. A lot of these startups that are developing their products here locally, solving the challenges that we face every day, have to send their designs overseas to China or to India for those products to get manufactured then wait for those products to, to get sent back home. That length of time has a direct impact in the resources that these companies have in trying to scale their products. By having or providing local manufacturing, we are now able to reduce the time that it takes to go from prototype into market, reduce the amount of resources required, and provide very quick turnaround support for these startups. Many of the people studying engineering, when they have good ideas, those ideas never become products. And most of the products we consume in the country come from outside uh, the country or some select industries within the country that have certain advantages. This is a time when we were thinking, of, uh, thinking how to set this up, that we were seeing a lot of success within the IT space. A lot of people with good ideas in universities and outside in Kenya who had good ideas were able to convert those into apps, for example, so fintech and so on, riding on M-Pesa, riding on IoT and all these developments that are taking place globally. And so Kenya became known as the Silicon Savannah. So we felt that engineering was missing out. Uh, here at Gearbox, uh, we are unique in the sense that uh, we have equipped our workshops, uh, both mechanical and ele electronics, uh, with equipment that's necessary for prototyping. Um, Currently, I'm seated at the mechanical workshop where we have a number of uh, digital fabrication uh, machines, some of which uh, we've designed and manufactured uh, them here locally in the country. This is where we deal with most of the metal works. So we have plasma cutters, we have a milling machine. This is one of our bandsaws and what happens is that it's currently working on a project for cutting uh, sheets of metal. And this uh, guy is actually making a machine in the process. Kunja bought is Swahili for, for bending. Uh, Kunja is bent and bought because the machine itself, it's, a, it's an industrial robot. Um, so the machine itself is a, it's an automatic pipe bending machine. And uh, the inspiration behind it was, I, I was trying to achieve repeatability. Uh, something that I've seen uh, and observed that was lacking in the Juakali uh, you know, sector. Our idea is, as I said, you make a good prototype and test it in the marketplace with a pilot and we therefore have machines available that people can come uh, and use without having to buy. So that's a very important part of what Gearbox avails to the innovator. The innovator otherwise would need to be able to raise the money to have the machines in place in their, in their workshop, wherever it might be, to then start production and that's a huge barrier to starting, much more so than, for example, somebody doing software, which in that case, you, all you need is to know how to code, have a good computer and good internet connect, connection and you're able to set up and go. But with hardware, what we can call broadly hardware, which means tangible things, uh, is a lot more difficult to make that uh, happen. Within Machine Africa, we have the maker spaces. Where you are currently is a maker space and you can see so many equipment all around and products that are being developed. So we give access, uh, we use the machinery that we have here to be able to make production, but for commercial purposes and for mass market purposes. We strive to maintain gender balance in the engineering space, which here in Kenya is predominantly male dominated. We also have persons who are living with disabilities one of our technicians is Mr. Paul. He not only works and supports the able-bodied beneficiaries, but also works hand in hand to ensure that we get good products and we can get innovators regardless of the state of ability 
or disability of the beneficiaries. For the people who then want to come in and use the equipment, we decided to pivot from our original gym-like model to uh, Gearbox Academy. So in Gearbox Academy, we went further than the safety and basic use training that, we, that I already described for the gym model and said, why don't we look at what's happening in the world today where the backdrop to what we're doing is the fourth industrial revolution. And the academy is all about imparting hands-on practical skills uh, through industry four technologies and human-centered design. Our goal is to build a society of skilled engineers who are able to come up with solutions which lead to product development and building tech enterprises. The entire world is going through uh, such a rapid pace of development in terms of technology that uh, if we don't get onto, onto uh, technologies that are considered to be future facing, then the gap between the economies in Africa and the developed world, the technologically developed world, is going to continue to grow. And so we determined that uh, because of the kinds of people we have here and the knowledge that they have, we'd begin by really focusing on those kinds of technologies that are future facing. It includes things like embedded systems, which implies you're embedding a computer into some kind of a device. Uh, and you know, your car has a lot of computers. A modern fridge has lots of computers, washing machines. So embedded systems are all over us right now. And so we're teaching people how to embed a computer into a system to make it automated, to make it more efficient, to make it reactive to its environment and so on. So that's a very big part of what we do. Um, when you do that, you're getting a lot of data. So it's important to be able to understand how to process the data. So machine learning and artificial intelligence ride on top of embedded systems as well very well. So we teach that as well. Uh, when you're designing, again, you want to use very modern tools, so you want to design whatever product you have in mind using your computer, using a tool called computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture. So that is a digital design tool. So digital design and fabrication is another course that we teach because the tools that we use to actually make whatever it is that you've designed on the computer are then driven by the computer. So you get precision, you get speed, efficiency, and so we teach that as well. And that really is the way that uh, product, production is going on around the world. And if you think about that, you contrast what we have in Kenya with what Juakali, in terms of what Juakali does, for example, the informal sector. The informal sector will tend to be able to have um, products that are not uniform, not repeatable, and not efficiently made. Productivity is very low, and yet they continue to be an important part of the economy. So the kinds of courses that we, we teach help people to be able to enable even the Juakali sector to be able to become formal because then they'll be able to make products that can be accepted by supermarkets uh, and so on and so forth. So that's an important element, being able to make the engineers that we train here better suited to, to, to our own uh, marketplace in this country. A gearbox, the different equipments help us to be able to do the different items that different people are doing. So you have a project, you have an idea, this is where we turn ideas into life. Gearbox is very dependent on partnerships. We have various kinds of partners, and as I said in the beginning, one of the most important partners is the donors. The donor community has given us a lot from the start, and even though we're trying to wean ourselves off donations, it's still very important for us to be able to partner with others. So one of the ways is direct don donations towards what we do, all that I've been de describing, so we're, we're always um, very much willing to do that. We're also willing to, to, to partner on specific economic subsectors. For example, there may be donors who are interested in, say, energy, for example, in this part of the world and how it can impact um, society, or maybe jobs, and we've had very productive partnerships with people who are interested in developing job uh, availability in the country. We might be looking at somebody who's interested in gender, for example, uh, or agriculture, or a combination of all, all these, healthcare and so on. And so uh, we are very interested and we have a lot of understanding from our experience on how any of these subsectors can really be very effectively pursued from a manufacturing uh, perspective. And so we're always open to people uh, coming to discuss ways in which that they can donate towards those ends.